friends, Heidi here from Rain Country Homestead. God is good all the time. And today I'm going to show you how to make your own cloth table napkins. And before I do, I want to answer a question I've been asked a couple times. This quilt here, yes, I did make. And I just put it, this is my big freezer, and I put it over this because not only does it just kind of look nice, it also uh, provides extra insulation to it. So, um, you know, to save electricity, whether we're on the, right now it's running off of solar, but you know, even in the winter time, you know, to help keep it insulated and save electricity that way. And then if the power goes out and we don't have enough solar, which typically we have enough solar to keep it running year round, but uh, just in case we don't, you know, this will just help, you know, help insulate it so we can get more, so we can serve our power. There we go. Okay, so anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm sh I wanna show you here, here are the ones I made several years ago, and I just fold them and then keep them in this little cute little box that I got at an antique store. And this is one of the finished ones, and this I just made out of fabric. Somebody gave me a whole bunch of fabric years and years ago, and so I just kind of used those to, to throw these together and made up my own size. So you'll want to make up your own size according to how big you want them. I found this is just, this is the perfect size for us. And what I do is I tri-fold them so you can set them out as just a, a nice, you know, a decent dinner napkin. Um, I know like a real dinner napkin, they can be quite huge, but this right here is just a good size all the way around. And so I'm going to go off of this size and I'll, I'll measure it out so you know what it is. At the time I made it, I just, I didn't measure it. I just said, oh, it's a good size. And then I just cut them out. So the finished napkin is about 10 and a half inches by eight and three quarter inches is what I have. So I'm, what I'm going to do is just use, I decided it'd be kind of fun to add a little more of the dark, some dark red in there. And you're going to want to double this over. So actually, let me do it this way. And is that not quite wide enough? I'm just going to use this as my guide. And you want to leave at least a quarter inch or about a quarter inch, give or take, for seam allowance. And I will be turning this. I don't want raw edges on these. Actually, I'm going to go like this because I want at least one side where it's on a fold that le that makes less sewing that way. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then on the, on the edge where I'm gonna have to turn it, I like to leave a little bit extra. All right, so now th this fabric here is pretty simple. And there I go again, forgetting to look at the camera screen to make sure everything's in there, so now showing this again. So you can see I left a little bit extra on this edge. Um, and then I'm going to be trimming off some of this here after I cut this. And this is the kind that I can rip really easy. Okay, and then I'm going to trim just a little bit off here. There we go. So that's going to be about, by the time I finish this out, it should end up being about the same size. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and cut another one, at least have a couple of these cut this color. Now, I don't know if I told you before in another video, but this ruler, um, I've had this since I was nine years old. So this thing is 42 years old and I'm still using it. My dad bought it for me in Chicago. He went in there, went in there one day, went there one day for some kind of business trip. And he came back with that little thing for me there, and I've used it ever since. My favorite ruler. I've bought many rulers over the years, but I still always come back to this one. Okay, so that should have ripped evenly. Now to get the, the length the same. All right, so the fit, the the size here. Let's take a look at this, so you'll know. So the unfinished 
size, folded in half, would be 11 inches. Okay, so it was right on the quarter inch by nine and a half. Okay, so that'll give you an idea. And I might make a couple in this. Now this is a flannel. This is just a batik, just a 100% cotton fabric. But this is a, a cotton flannel. And flannel, I think, I've never made any out of flannel. I got to thinking with all the other stuff I make out of flannel and how absorbent it is, it would actually be really nice to have a couple made out of this. So I might do a couple out of this fabric as well. So just kind of think of the fabrics you have. And uh, I'm thinking this is just going to be a really nice choice here. This will be fun. And this will look good with my decor. And these two colors seem to look pretty good together. This, this one with the flannel. And as long as the fabric will rip straight, it's uh, that's just the easiest way to go and fastest. Okay, so I'm going to make four napkins total. And there we have it. So you want to make sure when you go to sew these that you turn them in, uh, wrong side out. All right, I'm going to take this stuff into the other room and we'll get going on that. I have my fabric lined up where I want it. I just want a real narrow seam allowance. You can go up to a half an inch, whatever you want. I like to keep it a little bit narrow for this. It doesn't really matter. <clears throat> Make sure you've got this on straight stitch. And I'm gonna set the tightness on here, it would be three. And of course, locking down. Stitches there, it's just a nice straight stitch all the way down. For those of you who are new, this is a treadle machine I'm working with here. That's why it may sound very different. Um, it is not a converted electric machine. It is actually, it was purchased out brand new as a treadle machine and you can find a link to this in the description box. Or I forgot to explain that I have the, I started, I have the folded side here. And so I started from the opening there and straight down. So all I got to do is do another straight stitch here before I turn it. So here we go, locking it down. And you can see that it's, you can sew just as quickly on a treadle machine as you can on a electric machine. It just depends on how fast you want to pump your legs. All right, now that I have it like that, all I gotta do is turn it. Cloth napkins are super easy to make. Now, if you're using this kind of fabric, well, any kind of fabric, really. It's, it's best to wash it. Typically, you're supposed to, anybody who knows anything about sewing, you're supposed to wash your fabric before you sew with it. I, I just never do that. I never think about it. But these napkins do work better. They're going to work better for you if you, especially this fabric, if you wash it before you use it. Um, so anyway, I want to fold this over. Okay, so this one I made a little bit more. I left a little bit more for the allowance. Just to make sure if it slips, it still all gets caught in there good. But it shouldn't slip if I'm holding it. Um, one thing is if you're wanting to make sure this is really nice and as perfect as you can get it, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to iron this down. Um, I found though that another thing that works really well, especially if you don't want to heat up and waste electricity heating up your iron, if you have an electric iron, I do actually want to get one of those old fashioned irons that you heat up on a wood stove. I almost bought one one time and then didn't, but because I really don't use irons that much, but I found a really easy way to do this is to just take a spray bottle with water and then just lightly spray it and then just press it with your hands and it will hold. But this fabric here usually holds pretty good anyway. Okay, so you're want, going to want to get as close to the edge as possible with this. To, and you're going to want, also want your, depending on how nice you want this to look, you're going to want your thread to be um, 
as close in color to your fabric as you can get it. So it will, so this cam will look virtually invisible. And I'm going to go slow on this just to make sure I don't go flying off to one side there and, and miss it. These aren't supposed to be fancy dinner napkins. We use these day to day. I haven't bought paper napkins in a very long time. We've been using the cloth napkins for quite a few years. And there you have it. It's that easy. So then what I'll do is I like to tri-fold it this, like this. And then you can iron it down or you can use the method I was talking about where you spray it. What I did do with this, with these, my other ones, is I ironed it really well. I sprayed it down and then ironed it really well. And washing after washing, it'll keep those same creases so it makes it easier to fold. Flannel, I would say, would be the choice to go with because it's so soft and absorbent. But it just depends on what you're looking for. I mean, linen, obviously, is going to be a real nice choice. I do have an ironing board, but I find I just like using this freezer since I already have the blanket over it, and then I just throw another towel over it this way so I don't have to hassle with pulling out my, my ironing board. But I've uh, got my iron currently plugged into solar power, so I do truly like best being able to iron down these things. They just they just um, fold up nicer once you do this. So I iron the whole thing first. And I am right-handed, by the way. Uh, I iron left-handed mostly because my mother was left-handed and so the ironing board was always set up for a left-hander and that's just how I was taught. <laughs> I didn't realize there was a a wrong way that set turning the the ironing board so the pointy end was to the right was a uh, was the wrong way and I went to college and all the ironing boards were backwards to me and except for the one person that took one and broke that broke the top off and turned it the other way so there could at least be one uh, ironing board that was facing the, the right way for a left-hander so I was like huh Funny how that is, and I don't, I don't when I, I don't iron it this way. I just iron it so it's this way, and then I fold it this way when I stick it in my box. But when I'm setting the table, like for Thanksgiving or whatever, then I'll, I'll lay them out like this, and then put it, put the silver. So yeah, that's in there. just, uh, it just makes it better. Again, you can skip this step, or you can do the other method I was talking about by using the water, and um, spraying it on there, and just pressing it with your hands and then letting it dry. That's a totally off-grid way to do it. That doesn't even require solar power. So iron it that way, and then tri-fold it, and then iron it again. And like I said, I find that the wash after wash, once you get this pressed really good, it does just seem to keep holding those creases. I've never ironed them again, and I've been using the same napkins for a number of years and there's creases though they're not as obvious as they used to be they're still there and it just shoot it just makes folding them back up again super easy well as you can see by this photo i ended up making more than just two of each because i was liking these fabrics so much hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching take care and god bless <music>